right, Buzz Buzz babies, and welcome back to another episode of Blake's Buzz. I have a very cool guest on the show. I've been watching some of the stuff they've been doing. Uh, some friends of the show, friends of me, uh, uh, know them. Uh, some of you are, are probably aware of them, have read some articles, possibly. I have here... So I was going to say in the flesh, but not, this is a Zoom meeting, but I have here on Blake's Buzz, Barbara Dillon, editor-in-chief of Fanbase Press. That's all one word, by the way. Fanbase Press, very cool. They write amazing articles promoting really cool comics. Now you're making comics. Uh, that's exciting, and I'm stoked to talk to you about it, but let's start simple. Barbara, how you doing? I'm doing good, Blake. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, <laughs> I like I said, I, I've watched you guys uh, for uh, you know a while, um, partly out of a jealous rage. No, I'm kidding. You know, we're, we're I'm editor in chief at Geek Network, which I wasn't planning on being editor. in chief Congrats, at Geek by Network. the way. This is a recent development. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, and, and 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 learning a lot of learning <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and and trial by fire, right? Uh, but but you know, it's I I see what y'all are doing. I I so I so respect it. Like I, I you know, day job for me is in comics, but I work for the production studio, right? And so like that stuff gets done uh, first and then like, and then like fun interviews and then like, Oh, let's try and write articles. And then like, not just write articles. Let's like, let's come up with ideas for cool stuff. You know? And it's just, it's so exhausting and it's, it's impressive that you all have this team and you guys go to conventions and you do all this cool stuff before we get into, you know, superheroes, I guess let's, let's dive in. Like Barbara, tell us the, what's the origin story of a fan base press you and your husband, this is like your, your guys is, other child kind of right like, it or, it's part it of the is. family <laughs> very much so um and i will uh co-sign on you know it's a lot to juggle it absolutely is and i will i always like to put this out there because i don't want folks to have any you know misconceptions so i too in addition to fan base press in addition to our publishing and our media um have a full-time job you know i work in biotech uh which is completely the antithesis of comics um so but you know whatever you need to do to be able to do what you love I support that. Sure. Um, but yeah, so we are coming up on 15 years for Fanbase Whoa. Press. Yeah, so next year's 15 years for us. We, um, since the beginning, um, we have always been a strange bird in that we do both. We do publishing and media and journalism. Um, because for us, we're a small boutique company. It's, you know, it's just my husband and I doing this in terms of the publishing. Um, but uh, we wanted to help as many many creators as we could. We we both come from different facets of entertainment. I grew up backstage in like theater. My older brother is an actor. Um, he, uh, My husband is an actor as well. Um, I worked in film and TV when we initially came out to LA. Um, but we just wanted to be able to help as many people as possible and lift as many voices as we could. So we did both. We we started off, uh, our first big interview was uh, John Bernthal in like season one of Whoa. Walking Dead. And he was so gracious with his time. But that really kind of started us on an upward trajectory. And um, yeah, we, we just balanced the two in terms of putting out comics and graphic novels, as well as doing reviews, interviews. We have a whole podcast network. We do, as you mentioned, uh, uh, we go to a lot of conventions and do a lot of panel programming, uh, more virtual as of late uh, because of the accessibility issues. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can go to conventions. So yeah, we, we try to do as much as we can, but we love it. And so we, we make space for it in our lives that's awesome and and i'm i'm kind of i'm seeing behind you, you you've got some you, you've got some good taste in, in nerd i'm just seeing behind <laughs> you we got the the, the 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 big damn sin city a lot of a lot of this cool marvel i think i see some daredevil and spider-man so you're 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 a geek and a nerd at heart it's, and it sounds like your day job is fairly geeky and nerdy too but in a different are you okay. a scientist are you I, it oh almost gosh, sounds no. like you're a scientist <laughs> <laughs> no i am uh it, it sounds like a super villain role but i'm the senior <laughs> director of operations um but okay. i just I just build like the infrastructure of how the company works and how we do day-to-day -day operations. So, Oh yeah. Little easy things like that. Right. We, I, know, just, I, just, I just run everything Blake and then come <laughs> home and do the same thing for this <laughs> online geek, uh, geek extravaganza uh, c culture community th thing we're, we're building. No, I, I did not know y'all were around for 15 years. Like I, I've been around the scene um, I, I mean, I guess I've been podcasting for about four years now, okay. which is yeah. crazy. Um, just, uh, just under four years, I think. But I mean, yeah, you've, you've always been there since I've been here. Right. But I didn't realize 
I didn't realize like you predated me. I'm just kidding. I'm making you, say, <laughs> I'm making you sound like I'm old. Like, <laughs> it's fine. You can say it. I'm old. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, congratulations on, on 15, 15 years of that, like the, on side hustling with that and managing people and publishing and uh, just dealing with all that. That's so, that's so impressive. And like, sometimes you need to hear that, you know, like it's uh, you, you know, sometimes you're like, you're like, this is exhausting. And is it ever going to pay off? And then you talk to somebody who's like kind of in a similar walk of life and, and you're like, well, that's cute. You've been doing it for a year. I've been doing it for 15. It's yeah. so, you know, <laughs> like, it, it gets better. No? <laughs> <laughs> I empathize though. I mean, it, it is hard out there, you know, and it's, it's hard as you know, you know, now to be an editor in chief and to make sure that you're lifting everyone and doing the best that you can mm -hmm. with the resources you have, because I, I think that you know as well how hard it it is right now, especially for media, for comics journalism, it's it's a tough time. A lot of outlets are shuttering, um, yeah. amazing outlets. So it's, uh, I think a lot of us in the industry are struggling, no matter the the role that you play in the industry. So I, I applaud you for what you're doing. I love, again, listening to your interviews. Please keep doing what you're doing as long as it, make, it makes you happy. Yeah, it, it stresses me out to the max. But I mean, also like sometimes not like the interview part. Like this stuff does. This stuff is like the reset. Like I'll be, I'll get stressed and anxious. But then like I sit down, turn on the lights, mic goes hot, and then I'm like, all right, you know. And it's like that. So like that that helps. But yeah, it's it's in between the interviews where it's just like you're like, oh, there's 1,300 emails, and I'm not even looking at like my personal email. You know, and it's just like, and it's just like everything's just always. It never comics never stops. It's so weird how like you know, right? You're a publisher, like everything takes forever, but then all of a sudden everything's happening all at once. And it's like, you don't have time for anything. It's so weird. And no, you're, you're about to, I'm sure you know a little bit about it already, but you're, you're about to stumble into a whole new world with Kickstarter. Uh <laughs> it's probably why it's taken us 15 years to do a Kickstarter because <laughs> of the horror stories. But yeah, we, we've been working on this. Oh my gosh. I don't know how many months, even before the launch um, that we've been working on this, but uh, we really just wanted to, first and foremost, we're so excited about the book itself that's in production, but um, the, the Kickstarter community, which we've tried to support through things like our, we have a weekly uh, yeah. series called crowdfunding Fridays that we, you know, try to lift as many uh, indie creators, especially their voices and their stories up as we can. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so amazing, the community that's been built. And I know you yourself have had a lot of Kickstarter folks on as well. But yeah, it's amazing that in the face of, again, the struggles in the industry with the direct market and, you know, even barriers into the library world, um, that there is this opportunity for creators to go directly to the audience and to really get their stories out there to the people who are hungry for them mm -hmm. it's 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 a it's a massive beast and it's it's a respectable beast right uh but it's in that in that power of like now's the time anybody can tell their story there's also like oh but uh now you have to stand out with everyone uh, what did i saw something that was like impossibly hopeless the other day like every oh. minute like 500 hours gets uploaded to youtube or something stupid like that and i was just i was like <laughs> why are we trying i was like that's that's, in, that's scary i didn't ever wanted to see that number i've been doing this uh barbara because i'm i'm um I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a rude host and i enjoy watching my my uh I call you guys co-hosts basically because it's just me, but I enjoy throwing my co-hosts just right in front of the train. So it's con season. SDCC just wrapped up. I know some people are still, well, some people have COVID, uh, but some people are still getting caught up, getting back into the, the swing of things. Let's go back. Let's go back in time before the, uh, the sea of positive tests and, 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 and grody handshakes that happened. Uh, but let's, <laughs> let's, let's go to the start of the con. I am um, I'm stumbling around with my backpack full of recording gear and, and I come across this fan base press booth. There's all this cool stuff. Whoa, there's this gorgeous hardcover. Barbara, like, what, what is this? Pitch this, pitch this book to me. <laughs> Happy to. Uh, so it's called Ripple Effects and uh, it explores life as a superhero with an invisible illness. So this character is invulnerable to physical harm, but it's his own body that can harm him because he has type 1 diabetes. Um, and the this is a story by Jordan Hart, writer and creator and colorist of the series, and Bruno Chirilu, who is the artist. Um, and really what it explores is uh, not the invisible illness as the hurdle, as the barrier to overcome, but simply what is his life like? What are What is his day-to-day -day life? What are the struggles that he deal deals with? Um, and also why 
doesn't he want to be a superhero? What are the reasons why he would avoid that? Um, and what's really unique about the original series is that after every chapter, we had an essay by a different individual with an invisible illness or disability relating their lived experience to what happens in the book. And we had folks who had type 2 diabetes, uh, MS, paranoid schizophrenia, um, so a really wide breadth of uh, different illnesses and disabilities represented. Um, and as you mentioned, Blake, it, you know, we were so proud of this book and everyone involved. Um, it uh, was an Eisner and Harvey Award nominee. It won the Dwayne McDuffie Award for Diversity in Comics, um, Excellence in Graphic Literature, Forward Indies. Um, so it was really, really well received, which we were so grateful for um, in being able to provide a home for it. But we wanted to do more. We wanted to be able to, in seeing you know, audience reaction to uh, folks like yourself who have diabetes, who have other invisible illnesses and disabilities, you know, to be able to be represented on the page, to see themselves represented, or if not, you know, exactly like their lived experience, something similar to it. So um, we are doing an expanded hardcover edition of Ripple Effects, uh, and we are bringing in, we're just pulling out all the stuff. So we're bringing in everything we can. Uh, Gail Simone uh, is one of the individuals uh, who is writing a foreword. We also have two study guides that are being added, so it's more accessible for teachers to utilize in the classroom and librarians to have uh, on the shelf, um, and thereby the wonderful folks at Creators Assemble, uh, who are huge literary advocates, uh, as well as Eisner nominee Tim Smythe, uh, who's an educator and just a comics historian. Um, and the biggest, most favorite part for me uh, is that we're adding an art gallery by kiddos who have invisible disabilities and illnesses, um, and they're drawing themselves as superheroes. And we're pairing them with professional artists, uh, including Liana Kangas, um, Ray Anthony Haidt, uh, Donna Gillio from the Spawn series, um, and they're drawing the kids' drawings in a fully realized uh, rendering. So um, we're so excited about it. We're doing separate from Kickstarter. We're doing an auction of all of that artwork and donating everything to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So um, we just really, again, want to pull out all the stops in increasing access to these stories and also increasing representation as well. Wow. You are, you are pulling out all the stops. That is amazing. I wanted to go back to this Gail Simone thing. How does a bear write a foreword? And I'm just, if anyway, <laughs> if, and if no one's on Twitter, that's not going to be that funny. Uh, but everybody, there's a Gail Simone is a bear joke. Uh, no, she is amazing. That is amazing. Also just there, there's so much talent in this book and and it's so great there's so much ch charm and 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 hope and 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 good superheroing just just genuine good like that coming of cape story as i've i've never said that before i'm going to coin that term right now that's happening uh but it's it's it, you know it's, we've surpassed the coming of age right but it's the it, learning how to be a super the learning how to be a superhero story right and and you guys are doing that so well the the illness has a very fresh but it's not just the illness there's also like an ineptitude right there's a it's not an easygoing experience uh for our boy right he's he's uh he's, he's, he's got a rocky very rocky <laughs> start uh and and so just uh just do all but any you know when you have a name like the uh, gail simone when you're coming out on kickstarter you know that's just uh, anything that can help just shine a little bit of extra light on a book, you know, that's, that's so cool. This art thing with the kids though, that is amazing. And then the auction that this is all super exciting. How do you, did you have the children like fight to see who's like, <laughs> how, did, how what was the selection? Sorry. What was, what was the selection <laughs> process like on that? Yeah, so um, we started with the kids first. Um, we are very fortunate to just have a, a wonderful group of, of kiddos in our lives, each of whom, you know, has their own struggles and, um, you know, their own identities. Um, and, you know, those kids range from being autistic to um, having... Um, uh, different rare forms of meningitis. And so uh, actually one of the people that I mentioned doing a study guide, Tim Smythe, his son is doing one of the, the pieces of artwork um, because he does have a rare form of meningitis. Um, mm -hmm. And he's spoken about it at length publicly. So uh, we thought what a wonderful opportunity to be able to shine a spotlight on his son and his experiences as well. Mm -hmm. But um, from there, once we had the kiddos in place, we uh, reached out to all of the artists and they were fully on board from the get-go, which is so, you know, we we're so grateful for their generosity. And if they're um, not, like, they get, I mean, like, it's an amazing project, but it, like, who, like, when you're like, hey, you want to help draw pictures of like sick kids for a good cause? Like, if, if you say no, you get put on a list. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Like, you're like, that's, that's a rule. <laughs> like, you, um, but no, I mean, even, even, even when you start reaching out to names like that, even if you're like, 
have the project of projects with the best of uh, schedules, right. Is still lining all that up, which again, kudos to you and team Barbara for like, when you start bringing in all these creators, it's a great idea, but then it, it, it herding that herding those sheep. That's <laughs> a lot. Right. So um, how do you, how do you keep all this? Like you're scheduling these interviews. You're talking to weirdos like me. You're, you got the day job, you got the family life, you got the website, you got the fan, ba fan bases, even the website and everything else fan bases. And then you the creators of fan base and then the new projects. And then I'm sure you got a couple things up your sleeve that haven't been, been announced yet. Like, how do you, how do you manage all this? Like, and like, well, I will sit here for as long as it takes to figure it out because I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it. You're doing it already. Um, there, There's no there's no magic, I promise you. And I uh, honestly probably fail as much as I succeed. Um, but uh, I, I certainly don't do it alone. Um, we've got the wonderful creative team behind Ripple Effects, Jordan and Bruno. And, and I have to give a shout out to Justin Harder, who does all of the cover work for Ripple Effects, which are absolutely gorgeous. He's doing a new, brand new wraparound cover for the hardcover nice. which is just chef's kiss um but um yeah everybody involved is wonderful um uh, matthew no i have to highlight he wrote the the initial forward for the series uh when it was collected in trade paperback who's amazing um but yeah there are just so many wonderful people involved that we couldn't do this by ourselves of course i have my wonderful partner and husband bryant uh who's a huge part of this but i think it's just it's um a lot of it is organizing we try to be supremely organized and detail oriented we try to be being mindful of the fact that we we see the perspective of the publisher side of things and as you know the media side of things we know having done this just for a while we know what the pitfalls are we know where the where people need time they need that bandwidth so we try to allow as much time as we can both for the creative process and for the you know journalistic side of things and doing press so yeah we just we try to give everybody space and time and um you know, we don't want to ask more of anybody than they can, they can offer. Nice. That's a good, that, not a very publisher thing for a publisher to say, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound predatory and scary at all. <laughs> That's good. No, it, comics, comics needs more, needs more people like y'all for real. Um, And, and, and I, this story is I'm, I'm again, another thing I can't ever remember. Cause I, I always like, I always like make best friends with people. Like as soon as we log into zoom, which I've now realizing like maybe intense. Hey, Barbara. Oh my God. I have diabetes too. Ah, I think that's, that's, how okay. this, that's how this zoom call started folks. I was like, ah, this is like, I didn't know you wrote this comic for me. Like, uh, but it, it did. It, it really did feel like that. And as a, as a, as a white male, I don't struggle with being, you know, I see myself. Oh, I see myself where I don't want to see myself. I so, so much. Right. Like, shit um but you know i this idea of of um represent representation matters right we need to and and the, the representation of things you can't see too is 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 intriguing and the, like long long form illness and, and disabilities and these these struggles of of people that you don't you don't know you know um you, you don't uh you, when you when you get tired and, and that energy seeps out of you and you don't know if you're stressed or dying, uh, <laughs> it's like you're like I guess I should check my blood sugar. I don't know. Uh, well, I think it's what you spoke to earlier that you know uh, we're all tired. We're all dealing with you know the workloads that we have and only so much bandwidth. But uh, in addition to that, a lot of folks, yourself included, you know myself included, we have different uh, invisible things going on in our lives. Some that we mm -hmm. share, some that we don't. Um, and so I think that that's the power of this story is it's encouraging of reaching out to people, you know, whether it's someone else that might have an invisible disability or illness or to folks who have never known this or, or have their own challenges and barriers that they're dealing with. So, you know, we don't have to have a, a disability or illness to connect with a story. It's purely about sharing your lived experience and, and reaching out to people because there, there are a lot of wonderful people out there and they don't have to have the same exact experience as you uh, to be able to connect with you and have that empathy. Totally. I, I agree with that 110%. And, and also I just, my favorite superhero story, and, and it's one of the reasons I, I, I bring it up because he, he just, he does it so well and he keeps doing it uh, and, and it never gets old, but like, Tom King is really good at kicking the shit out of superheroes and having them pick themselves. You know, like it, there is no path in a Tom King comic that is easy for any hero. And, uh, and I feel that thread, uh, that narrative thread here, mm -hmm. There's nothing is easy. Uh, uh, the, the decisions here aren't easy. Uh, the, who we team up with 
it, right isn't isn't easy um I know, I know this book's been out for for a little bit but like i don't i hate spoilers and and so i don't i try real hard not to spoil stuff so if i'm being vague and it sounds interesting i buy the book there's a thought uh <laughs> but you know uh back the kickstarter uh but yeah there's there's um there's a lot of uh emotion and physicality there's a whole slew of things outside of of being diabetes that's just like he's not heroic he's he he's not a he's not a great decision maker he's he's a writer he's he's a he's a novelist like stuck on chapter 10 there was a moment so i was in an mfa program right and and like the 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 workshops I'll, i miss the workshops a lot right and the, the writing workshops and stuff but there's like the, the teachers would like beat that into you you know like when we're when you're getting workshop, you shut up and listen. Like you get, you talk at the end, you get a couple minutes at the end, but like, we're, we're talking about your story. And some people weren't good at that, you know? And, and you brought, there's a moment, um, there's supposed to be the, there's a reading, he's going to the reading, you know? And, and when he gets so mad and he's like, I missed out because of the, and I was just, I was like, wow, you're a shit person. And like, you know, <laughs> I was also like you think that, right. But there's, the good, the the amazing thing actually about this book is there's in this narrative, in these little, there's a lot of moments like that, right? But there's layers because you're like, you're like, wow, that guy is, is kind of a douche thing to do. And then like right after that, you're like, I'd be so pissed too, right? Like if it was like, Blake, is, you're about to go to your first SDCC panel and they flew you out here. They never do that for podcast. You know, and it was like all this stuff. And then like, I get there and then like Batman's like, Blake, we need you. And I'm like, screw you, Bruce. You know, and it's just like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I would tell Batman to screw off. You know, I was like, I, I probably would. Uh, like, this is my moment. I'm in the spotlight. Uh, I thought that there's a, so many scenes in this book that are so great. As a publisher, you're looking what there's a lot of stuff in this book that sticks out. But like, what, what, do you, what, what was the big golden nugget for you that was like, we have to put this out. We have to like, we have to this has to be like ours and with us and, and like, what, what was it the moment in the book that struck you? Yeah, that's a great question. So the book actually wasn't fully written when it came to us. Jordan brought the story to us um, and it was a very personal one for him. He had had it with him for about 10 years because he himself has a, a incurable blood clotting disease called thrombophilia. Um, and so he wrote the story. He had been hospitalized for something like three months uh, when it was discovered. Um, he has to take daily medication to survive. Um, and he had this story, but it was so close to him uh, that it was tough for him to share. And so I remember vividly, we were actually at another launch party for another book. And uh, he came to support the book, which was so kind. And he said, hey, uh, you know, I have this story that I, I want to share with you. And uh, we read the pitch deck and that he had put together. And there was no doubt in our mind. We just, it was such a personal story for him and so genuine and authentic. Um, and the message of hope. And I think going back to exactly what you were saying a minute ago in terms of like, sometimes there are parts of ourselves that even we don't see, but that are so powerful that, you know, even even though we have not great parts of ourselves and sides of ourselves that we may not want others to see, they're relatable and we all have them. Um, but what needs to be shared is that really great part of ourselves. And so if we don't acknowledge that like, hey, sometimes we're not always great. We don't, we sometimes make mistakes, but uh, sometimes we really just have to apply to our, apply ourselves, excuse me. And if we do, we can help so many other people. You know, we can help ourselves in the process, but if you open yourself up, if you allow yourself to be part of a community, you can have such a wonderful and positive impact. And it was that message that really resonated with us. And we were like, yes, this is absolutely a story that we want to put out there. Wow. That's so, that's, that's super inspiring. That's super also rare in indie comics. I don't know why in your comics, I don't know why my voice <laughs> just broke there. Uh, going through puberty at 39, uh, oh, it was a, a weird, it's been a weird time for me. Uh, <laughs> this hair in funny places no uh wow sorry it, it's a weird time in indie comics uh you know i won't name anybody but like i hear this a lot of it, these uh the the new thing in, in indie publishing is when you're pitching they're like yeah cool sounds great we want all four issues we want all six issues we want this thing done you know and it's like it's kill it's hurting a lot of people right now and that's a that's another reason of of the big wave to to kickstarter is it's it's either like people are dumping a lot of money into art that they didn't plan on and so let's launch you know let's kickstart it see if we can get anything back or you know at least get a printed book to, to you know anyways there's a lot of there's a lot of elements that go into 
funding art, funding Kickstarters and stuff. But there's, um, but I I hear that more and more. Is just these these indie publishers expect the whole thing done like right away, which is that's a lot to be to put on uh, creators, you know, to have everything done, edited, lettered, art done, finalized, like almost borderline ready for print. Uh, so is that a practice? I mean, it's it, I don't think that's a violent or like negative practice necessarily. I think the industry is just a little more intense than it used to be, right? Sure. Um, as a publisher though, like is that is that something? like you think about like were, was this like you were like this is worth the risk like we'll we'll be there through production um normally you know we would want a little more done or or or, or, or do you think in terms like that necessarily that's a great question so we definitely do think about that but honestly uh in our entire history of publishing we have only put out one book that was pretty much finished. Um, and that's what's, I think, unique about us as a publisher as well, is that we we are very much part of the development process. Um, sometimes, especially for Ripple Effects, we were part of locating the artists and, you know, ensuring that they paired well with Jordan and especially for the story and and the, you know, the tone and theme of the story. Um, but yes, we're absolutely part developmentally of the process all throughout production. Um, and so it's very often the case, um, occasionally it has been like the germ of an idea that someone brought to us and we were like, that's so powerful that it sounds something like we want to do. So yes, let's collaborate. Let's make it happen. Um, a lot of times, though, the scripts generally come to us. Uh, and sometimes we have a full team put together, including the art, the artist, sometimes not. But that that is not the most important thing to us. The most important thing to us is that we have a clear vision of what the creator or creators want to do, um, that they're receptive to feedback and to direction. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that it's someone that because, as you know, the creative process making a comic book is a long one. Um, so we want to make sure that we gel well together. Oh, um, yeah. Do you, you like know. the people? Yeah. <laughs> That's you know, um, and also that, you know, this is, we were talking a lot about this at Comic-Con and various panels, how important it is that, you know, you don't, for us, you do not have to have a social media presence. Some of our creators don't, are not on social media at all. I know, I'm okay. wildly jealous of all of them. I know, true. right? I know. Oh. But that's okay. Like we, we don't have a requirement as a publisher that you have to have X number of followers on whatever platform it might be. Um, because that's what we do. That's part of our job. And so our job, you know, it's wonderful if we can have that benefit of the creator supporting it on social media, getting their voice out there. But it's important that if they are out there, that they're putting their best foot forward because they're not only representing themselves in the book, but fan base press by extension as well. So that's also a really important part of, you know, just vetting the creative team before we uh, start on this long-term project together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, especially now, right. It's who knows, who knows what, I mean, so, no, no, nobody's perfect, but you know, it's just like, sure. it just is uh, every, uh, every other day. Like I used to love Harry Potter, not anymore. Uh, yeah. good God, you know, and, and, and you can block, I've, I've blocked her everywhere and, and it doesn't matter. And then she ruins the goddamn Olympics. Uh, anyway, it's, I'm sorry, Bart, but yeah, it's just <laughs> like, but it's, you know, it's, it's so, uh, it sucks because there are some people are really talented. Some people get amazing opportunities. Some people have amazing stories in them. They're, they're not nice people, you know? And, uh, so yeah, you gotta, you gotta be careful with who you, who you work with. And, and I think that's an important message to get out there. Cause I think a lot of people get way too excited and may not think that part out, you know, may not think through that part enough or, um, or like, Oh, I really like this artist and I can afford them hired, you know, and maybe didn't, look into them more you know like uh and you know, I, i've just i've seen i've heard so many stories you know of like of not just like people being like um like morally gross people but or like gross social media presences or but just like taking the money and vanishing and or like almost a borderline like holding high-res art hostage i've heard crazy yeah. stories right so yeah like get to know your people before you sign papers before you exchange money like before you exchange ip and ideas like it's, it's so it's and, and and i get it you know um i got i won't i got an i got in i was on a podcast network that with you know and they didn't it, it wasn't bad or anything but it was just like i probably shouldn't have done it you know and then it was like later on it was like kind of awkward to get out of it and like and so i was like man, maybe I should have listened to people, you know, but, but I was excited and I had this meeting and I was a brand new podcast. And and it, they were like, they said they're every, they were going to be on his network and we want some advertisements. You want to get some money. And I was like, Oh yeah. You know? And so like, it, it, you gotta, you gotta be careful. So that's, that's good. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, 
I'm glad that's a, that's a thing. Uh, I, I especially, you know, from a publisher, sure. But you, it, like you would kind of expect that, but I do think a lot of these indie creators and you've met a lot of them and it's, you know, it's, it's a weird industry. It's easy to get excited. It's, uh, it's unfortunately easy to get taken advantage of. Right. Yeah. So it's good. Well, to I think that's, that's an important thing to note that uh, honestly, for any independent creators who may be watching to know that, as you mentioned earlier, like there are some predatory publishers out there, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not going to name names. There are lots of wonderful publishers out there too, but yeah, as an independent creator, if you're taking a contract with a publisher, please get some help, you know, which I know mm -hmm buries uh, you know or carries a, a financial cost to it to have an attorney review it but it's really important because there are some you know untoward folks out there um but on the opposite spe spectrum of things like my biggest piece of advice for folks is to just be kind because as you know this is a really small industry um and you should be kind just because it's the right thing to do mm -hmm. um but also word travels really fast yeah. and i think you know anytime dangerously in fast like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah, so I, I think morally, it's just the right thing to do to be kind and to be thoughtful, but and to be authentic, be yourself, but mm. know that, you know, the way that you treat others, the way, you know, the way that you act with others uh, is is how it's going to portray you. And so you want to put your best foot forward, because you never know, you know, it, it may be a really small project or an anthology that you're working on one day, and the editor from that may go on to, be, you know, work at a huge publisher. And so mm -hmm. that be a, a potential job offer in the future but you know if you don't take the smaller opportunities to be kind then those opportunities when something greater op opens up for you may not become available yes that's true uh and i, I like how you really practice this kindness deal because there was i really like your social media presence i try really hard to be positive everybody knows i'm like mr positivity i love comics i love everything you know um I have, I have, I don't love everything and I have shit days too. Right. But, and, and I've, people have reminded me, Barbara, like, they're like, you know, Blake, thousands of people follow you now. So maybe like watch what you say online. So, and, and I, I forget that because for a long time, like I was, I'm that age, right? Like as we put our feels on social media, like, I, I still remember like all the pithy bullshit on my AOL instant messenger away messages, like. <laughs> cheesy song lyrics hoping this girl oh. from class sees it like why, where's blake why is he sad oh it's my fault like i knew like it's just so like i'm i'm used to over i'm used to oversharing i'm i do that that's one of the reasons why people like my show is because i very much overshare and and talk about we talk about life and comics too right um and uh but 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 you, your social media presence is so, you just, it's like you check in on people and I really dig that. And, and I feel like you're not, it's, you know, like you're not just like some like person on Instagram influencer who's like, I'm going to put up like a nice quote. So I get like free product in the mail. Right. And, and <laughs> you're just, you're like, Hey, like, I hope, I hope you all have like a really good day today. And if you're not having one and need to talk to somebody, you can, you can reach out. Like i that's uh it's scary it's it gets it gets scary lonely anywhere but i, I feel like especially in this industry yeah. of so many creator and i'm sure you've heard it too like we talk to these people and, and they're like wow it's like i'm not used to people loving my book and it just it feels like no one ever reads it no one knows who i am and and and, and you know it's it, it's lonely publishing is lonely and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of it's a lot of reading and solitude and quiet you know because it's it's hard to reading's not really a social a social event right it's your, that distracts you but you know um yeah. if, if you're about to publish a book and you're proofing it or so you're you i hope you're in your office where it's quiet you know i would imagine uh yeah you know you're not like in the middle of a party like oh yeah that's a, oh miss this you know it's so it's just like it's this weird world that we live in and and I, and i think a lot of us get caught up in that like we're in it by ourselves and no one's yeah. in our corner uh and so like yeah having a voice like yours out there reminding us that that's not the case and not just like your social media presence, but, but your whole, your whole brand, your whole deal, the whole, whole fan base press, like, you know, inclusion comics are for everybody. Good stories are for everybody. You know, anybody can tell stories. I, I, I just really love it. Um, you all did, uh, you, you just got back from SDCC and I know we have a mutual friend, uh, Jessica Mason. Um, and like you all did, uh, you do got you, both of you do a lot of library work. Um, because you're, you're, you're both just terrible people trying to get 
more <laughs> comics into libraries into the hands uh -oh. of anybody who wants to read them right doing like that's that's real hero shit folks but i mean like saving people from fires and stuff is cool right yeah like but like honestly like working with librarians who like never like teachers most often never have the resources that they need and 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 just like helping them uh and and helping the people that go to libraries and, and so yeah i just i love what you guys do what is your what is your drive and passion for like working with these librarians who are kind of like the unsung heroes in this in this weird you know book world we we live in but like how how'd your work with librarians and, and stuff start Sure. Well, that's a great question. Honestly, you said it. The reason that we do it is because the, oh my goodness, librarians are unsung heroes. They are on the front lines of a really challenging time right now. I mean, they are the folks who not only are doing above and beyond job, you know, job description wise, above and beyond, they are social workers, they are caretakers, they, you know, are, are expected to do more with less, you know, budgets of libraries are quickly diminishing, um, but they still have to do all of the same work and sometimes with less workers. So, and let alone the fact that I think it was in um, 2021, a study was done about the number of uh, book bans and challenges that are happening with the increased calls for censorship that are overwhelmingly for comics and graphic novels uh, above prose books. Um, and librarians are just under fire tremendously. So first and foremost, a shout out to them. They are the true heroes. They're doing amazing work and we're so grateful for it, um, which is why we want to do everything that we can to help them um, to ensure that people understand that they're going through these troubling times and how challenging it is for them, um, how anybody, you don't have to be a librarian, but anyone in a community can help to fight against censorship. They can fight against the book bans. Um, so it's a really important that we do that work. Um, and a lot of the librarians that we've met along the way, like Matthew No, who wrote the foreword for the, the first uh, trade paperback, um, they're just doing tremendous work. And, and I'll highlight, there is a, um, a group within the American Library Association called the Graphic Novel and Comics Roundtable. Um, and it's been in existence since I apologize in advance. I want to say 2018, but they're essentially like the comics division of the ALA. Cool. And the amount of advocacy work that they're doing and the amount of just providing resources for librarians, for comics professionals, all of us, like I'm I'm a member of the GNCRT. Um, so if we can do whatever we can to support them, we are always a thousand percent on board. And honestly, to go back to the Kickstarter, um, we are gearing this very much towards librarians and educators. Um, we are actually adding, uh, I believe it's two different reward tiers. Number one is donate a copy of the book to a library or school of your choice. So that's nice. one of the um, another is uh, buy a copy, donate a copy, so you, you can get one and, and also do the same. But then in terms of stretch goals, uh, if we meet certain stretch goals in the campaign, uh, we are adding a, a form to the Kickstarter page that you can find on there. And if you are a librarian, if you are an educator, enter your information in this form. It's free to do. And at random, we are selecting folks uh, if we meet our stretch goals just to donate copies, just, you know, free of charge, complimentary copies, because we love libraries, we love schools, and we want to help as much as we can. I like this notion of, of supporting libraries. I don't go into my library a lot, but I'd be lying if I said like, uh, if you guys like my show, uh, Hoopla makes it better. Hoopla makes it to where I can do uh, research uh, every now and then I will talk about a book from a creator and they'll be like, Oh my God, I can't believe someone read that. And then I'll be like, I Googled you and just read stuff for, you know, and it's, but uh, you know, that, that stuff helps. Um, I wish I could buy everybody's book. Uh, like anytime I interview someone buy their bibliography, it's not always the case. Uh, sometimes afterwards I, I, I go down dangerous, you know, like I'll, you'll get like inspired and then drop, a hundred bucks at the bookstore. Oops. Uh, no, yeah, it's uh, but yeah, I, I just, I think it's awesome. I libraries are amazing. Uh, you know, they're, it's, if your internet's ever out and, and you need to see yeah, they're, they're, they're there in a pinch for you when you really need it. Uh, kind of like God, you know, like you're, you're like when, <laughs> when the turbulence hits on the airplane and you're like, Oh no, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it's just like the, the libraries are kind of there for the same way. They're just, there, there's always, something there for you if you ever need it even if it's just uh internet connection or if you need to like print a tax form they'll help you out uh so yeah uh, cool cool people to 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 work with and and yeah we need more we need more book book we just need more people to read more people to read books and it seems it seems dumb why do they want to get rid of this stuff barbara is it, we why do we live in this world where they're like we need to ban books and ban uh 
how do you how do you combat with that as a, as a publisher is it there was a there was a joke for a while right about like uh you kind of want your book to be banned because everybody's talking about it. right but, right but also you don't because even with uh the the good people talking about it the the people maybe people who need to read it won't ever right uh and it's like you're 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 secluding a group of people more by like allowing that behavior to happen right so, you're you're letting it get you're letting it fester and get worse you're you're yeah. you're you know it's an open wound <laughs> that's uh so how do you how do you how do you combat with that as a publisher like i i feel like most of it's like blake we don't care like come you know like oh, let them no. come at us you know but no. it's, think about <laughs> it's yeah it's a great question and honestly i i'm gonna give a, a shout out to jack phoenix who is a librarian um he is also the graphic novel selector at bread art and uh he has worked with an organization called unite against book bans and what that organization that project has done is is, um, because, and for those who may be unaware, when a book is challenged by a library, um, oftentimes it can be by, and it's usually a very small minority of folks who are just very loud, a lot of times they'll get challenges for books that aren't even in their library catalog. Like the book doesn't even exist in the library, but they're making a challenge anyway, which is simply making, again, more work for the librarians. Mm -hmm. um, so that happens frequently, but when a challenge occurs, there's a whole paperwork process that then has to happen for the library staff that they have to go through to kind of demonstrate why the book is okay, why it's on the shelf, why it's appropriate for everyone, and why the challenge should not be put through. Um, but this Unite Against Book Band um, organization and project, uh, Jack Phoenix has done a tremendous amount of work, and they do the heavy lifting for publishers, which is amazing. So essentially what they do is they put together, uh, I believe they call it a book resume. And so for uh, hundreds of books that have been challenged or censored, they put together this book resume on a website. And so as a librarian, if that book is challenged in your library, you can go there, you can pull the information and a lot of it's done for you. So you can actually get back to, to the important parts of your job that you want Ooh. to be doing. Um, so, but as a publisher, I mean, we have been incredibly fortunate that none of our titles have been challenged, none of them have been censored or banned. Um, but yeah, it's, I think the important thing that we can do is just support librarians, we can support other publishers, um, and support creators and just demonstrate that that censorship is not okay. It's not okay by publishers either, because we had that in this past year, we had some publishers that were doing some untoward things and self-censoring. And I think that self-censoring is one of the worst things that you can do. Uh, if you're a publisher, your job is to be getting an unfiltered and authentic and genuine voice out there. Um, and any work that you're doing against that is just the antithesis of, of why we do what we do. Yeah. That was a very rock star thing to say, but I like that. I like, I like your, I like your style, I like your vibes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, that's so cool. There's, there's so much, it's crazy. Cause it's, you, you think like, you know, comics is the, the, I think usually is like how the, the main problem in comics is like, how do we, how do we get a, how do we get people to hear these voices? How do we get people to, how do we get people to pick up a book? Right. And then that, that is a, uh, it, it blossoms right into even more problems. <laughs> it's like, well, they, how do we get them to pick up a book? Well, you stop fucking banning them. That helps. Uh, you know, there's a thought like, uh, there's this, you ban a book and then, and then a thousand ignorant people buy them on Amazon and throw them in a fire to post on Facebook. Like, okay, great. Um, anyways, it's, it's weird times. And I just, I love that people, I love that, that people put the energy and, you know, it's not just, you're not just putting in the energy to publish a book and you're not just publishing other people's book to publish your own titles. Right. And you're not, you've, you've got all these things going on. You're, you're lifting up all these creators. You're, you're, you're helping libraries hustle, making lives better, putting great comics out there. Um, one of the things on just the note of like the damage of banning books, right. Is just like, I, I am, a, I'm, I'm not like, I'm 39. I'm diabetic. Uh, I don't take great care of it. And, and, uh, and so like I was reading this book and it hit different. Right. And then, and then especially the first essay, because the first essay deals with diabetes right after, um, I, I was like, I was like, wow, you know, and it's just like, I look, you learn something, you know, and it's, you learn, even if it's an emotional lesson, Right. It doesn't have to be like, I learned how to beat diabetes. Right. It's just like quit eating sugar, idiot. No, it's um, that's I was talking to me, not anybody else out there. That was a self-warning. <laughs> I, I think anybody who followed me, I don't know this will come out later, but I like I think at like one o'clock in the morning last night, I was eating 
uh, cookies and dipping them in icing. So I was, oh, like, no. I was like, like, this is like Dunkaroos, <laughs> but better. Uh, it's cool. It's fine. I'm gonna live forever. Uh, so anyways, but yeah, it's, um, if you take away the opportunity for people to stumble across that, right. Uh, you're, you're, you're missing out. You're missing out on, on life lessons. You're, you're missing out on, on self-enrichment on edu on education. Uh, you know, it's, it's not, it's so silly. Um, but I, I really respected the back matter you put in, into, into this book. And it's, you know, so many people do the like process, like, you know, here's the, the layout to sketch, to color, to let, you know, we've seen that it's cool sometimes. Right. But it's, we've seen it. Uh, we've seen script pages. We've seen, you know, we've, this, um, this was a lot of work. I feel like having to track down these are, these are, these are academics. Okay. So I guess, Maybe some of them are excited to write you a short essay because I, I guess usually an academic essay is like what forty five pages. Or like, yeah, I'll write you four pages. That's nothing, right? Uh, but but you know that's a lot of extra work to curate that. How did you pool these people together? How like how did I, I, that kind of interested me? Or and was that was that you all? Was that the was that the 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 book creators? Or was that like a culmination effort? Like how did that yeah. happen? That's a great question. So that was us uh, at Fanbase. Um, we we always like to go further. We want to ensure that not only are, are you enjoying an amazing story, but that you're getting uh, an opportunity to ask yourself questions, to pose questions to a group, and just to to initiate conversation. That's really important for us. Um, and so this was an interesting group of folks who wrote the essays. The first one, uh, Dr. Teresa Rojas wrote the essay about her experience with type 2 diabetes. Um, I have known and worked with her for I do not even know how many years, um, but she founded the um, Latinx uh, Comic Art Festival, which happens in Modesto, and I'm on the board uh, and the steering committee for that. So we do you were... sleep, Barbara? Do no, you have you I ever don't. had a nap in your I life? Don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm the chair of this. I'm on the board. We're putting out a book tomorrow. We're putting out a book next week. <laughs> I got five articles to edit for the website. No, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I, no, I, you, you have so much shit going on. It's so impressive. Oh, thank you. Uh, but yeah, so Teresa and I have known each other for many, many years, and uh, I knew of her experience with diabetes, and so thought she was a perfect candidate. Um, but there are other folks who work... Um, in the comic book industry, Amanda Lawson wrote about her experience with multiple sclerosis. Um, she works in the marketing department at Boom Studios. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all different people, all walks of life, all have, you know, very different experiences. Mike Ahn, who is a comics creator himself, he has a wonderful uh, series, which I should highlight. It's called Out of Order. And it's about his own lived experience and his wife's experience uh, with paranoid schizophrenia. So, you know, he has that uh, um, illness and, and he speaks to what their life lives have looked like. Um, but he wrote about that for his essay. And we're just so grateful for it because everybody's lived experience is different. And sometimes, like we talked about, sometimes someone who has an experience outside of your own, you can still connect with. Um, and sometimes people, you know, your experience with diabetes may be very different than Teresa's experience. But yeah, she's probably not eating Dunkaroos at midnight. I hope not. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think that, uh, the value, oh, yes. no, it's fine. <laughs> We're here to talk about getting better and, dying, and I'm like, I'm eating icing by the spoon. <laughs> if I'm up at 1am now working, I'm going to ping you on, on Twitter. And I'm just going to be like, what are you eating right Put now? Put the spoon down now. <laughs> <laughs> no, usually I don't. Cause I, I like, if I'm worried, like, I don't, um, I don't, I don't like having food at my desk usually, you know, so like very, I'm not like a, I'm not like a scavenger muncher. Like it's weird. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm like a weird fat person. I've lost a lot of weight, but I don't, I don't eat a lot. Like, you know, I, you, a lot of people used to think like, I would just like just eating cheeseburgers by the handful, but I just like, I just, I just have bad metabolism. Uh, well, it's, uh, I mean, and I've talked to folks who, who also have type two diabetes that it's tough. I mean, it's the comic book industry is not a financially stable one. Mm -hmm. If you're a creator or, you know, other, uh, facets of the industry as well. Um, and so health insurance isn't a guarantee. Um, you are working long hours, which I'm sure you can attest to, which, you know, then if you need to eat, you eat whatever is close to you. And so that or makes forget, I forget. There's a forget. lot of times where like, I don't eat breakfast, don't eat lunch. And then I'm just drinking G fuel, which is water mostly. So yeah, <laughs> but, but still, you, you know, like your diabetes people are, but diabetes people, diabetics are 
I'm a doctor. Uh, no, <laughs> you're, you're it's a technical term. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it's yeah. tough to take care of yourself and it's tough to monitor your well-being even when you absolutely need to mm-hmm. and work in the comic book industry. It's it's a it's a tough balance that you have to do. Yeah, so it's a it's a it's a shark infested waters out here. If I don't know, I don't know, Barbara, people just understand that the traumatic experiences we all go through to make sure that they get these comic books on Wednesday. <laughs> Oh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. Well, it is. It's a it's a big deal. But um, but yeah, it's uh, I I still it's it's stressful. But I love it. like I I never thought like my day job would be comics, right? Uh, and it's it, it's a ble- it's a blessing and, and and a curse as I'm dealing with right now. Uh, and with, with that notion of like healthcare and stuff. Um, but also like I've I've had to I've had to conversations with like some close friends and stuff, and it's it's been like, man, do I quit and like find something that like I hate again for healthcare and a little more money? Or do I like, do I like chase the dream and ride it out and see what happens? You know, and like, guess what? Chase the dream, ride it out, see what happens. Just sounds cooler than like <laughs> my buddies wanted. My buddies were gonna get me like an. In, they were like, dude, like we'll get you on like whatever insurance firm. Or, and it was just, and I'm like, I was like, ah, you know, I thought about it, but I was like, no, like this was this was hard. This was hard to stumble into. I don't want to fall out. I don't want to. I quit grad school. I'm not quitting. I'm not, I don't want to quit anymore. Yeah. I quit cigarettes too. That was good. And I quit drinking. That's that was good. good. But That's but like, good yeah. I don't want to quit this bar. I don't want to, you know, so, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, 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 you know, a lot of that, when I was at the old job before all this, like doing this was hard. This, mm-hmm. you know, like working, working a normal day job, not in com. It's, it's hard enough when I like have a long comic day and do an interview, but right. Like working, I was at a niche call center and working at a call center all day and then coming home and then maybe eating a sandwich and then hopping on, hopping on an interview. Right. And it's just like, it's and it, it, it's, it, it was a lot. And so, yeah, it, I don't, I love it though. Like I complain, everybody knows I love to complain, but I, I, I also love it with like every factor of my being. So, um, but yeah, it's just, uh, it is, it is a lot and it's, it's, it's long hours and it's weird, but we, you know what? We're nerds, Barbara, what the hell else are we going to do? I guess, exactly. I guess, you know, you can, you could be a chair at all the various organizations and like <laughs> you got other stuff I guess you can do if, if you like decided that you well I guess not it almost sounds a lot of a lot of the stuff is wrapped up in con- even the extracurricular stuff you're into yeah. is all I I uh yes uh I also <laughs> because I uh, have so much free time I uh was very honored actually to become a board member of the Graphic Medicine International Collective this year Ooh. um and so this is honestly so close to Ripple Effects so Ripple Effects is part of the graphic medicine genre and for any audience members who may be unfamiliar with the term uh it's this emerging genre which is very simply the convergence of the entire field of medicine so physical medicine mental health everything with comics that's that's the whole thing yeah and a lot of people are doing graphic medicine comics and just aren't familiar with that term and so for me that is what i'm so excited about about being part of this organization and being on the board is doing like an awareness campaign of like hey Graphic medicine is awesome. It can be you sharing your lived experience with cancer, with diabetes. It can be a more didactic comic about like if you're a doctor and you want to educate people about COVID. Um, You know, it's all different things. Or it can be a fictional narrative like ripple effects. Um, But it's so amazing that more people are able to share their experiences and share their stories through something like graphic medicine. So if I can play a very small part in like making more people aware of this and encouraging people to do it, I'm excited to do it. I just like the term graphic medicine. Graphic like, medicine. Comics forever have been my graphic medicine bar. I haven't had healthcare a long time. <laughs> comics are very much my both both my both my graphic dilapidation and my graphic medicine. <laughs> More so the medicine more. It's, it's, it's more, I, I, I kid. Um, but, but yeah, I love that term. That was new to me reading this too. That was exciting. Uh, yeah. And it, it seems like, uh, I, I want more. And I like that this goes both into fiction and nonfiction graphic medicine, but it really does play into a, a creative nonfiction, like, and ease right like it fits into that niche real well uh but it like as you've shown it it also fits into the fiction uh superhero you know so it's like just a, a welcoming a welcoming realm in genre fiction right which is and and new so like if if you can like slide in there right like that's you know any 
anything to help get noticed, but also it, it, the stories that like need to be told, right? Uh, people get sick, sucks. Um, so it doesn't have to be the end of the world, even if it, and I, I say this like not meaning it callously, but like, even if you do get sick and it is the end of the world, the time remaining, you, you can salvage, there's things to salvage. There's, you know, there's always a little bit of hope. Um, but you know, sometimes you need those reminders and this That's seems like a, a nice pool of reminders for people that need it once it gets once it gets rolling. Absolutely. I think that's the biggest message from this book is that you're not alone, that there's a community of people out there to support you in whatever you need. So yeah, I, I completely agree. That is so cool. Well, Barbara, I, I love this book and I'm so, I, I, I know a lot of people, if, if it wasn't received well, you, you all wouldn't be dumping more money into production, making it bigger, fancier, better, and bringing it back to, to crowdfunding. Right. So I, the the people that are new to it, I really encourage. If you like superhero books, it's fun. I and and you you heard me like if you if you're a, if you're a Tom King guy, like this will you'll dig a lot of what's going. Like it's it's that kind of it not not always like as as um, disparaging necessarily as as he gets sometimes, but like very you know, very much like uh, you know sometimes you got to pick you know even with that notion of like what Barbara just said of like there is a community and you're not alone. True. But sometimes you got to pick yourself up, right? You can't, you can't always have other people pick you up. Uh, and then sometimes like, you know, if people pick you back up and all you do is fall, then, then you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stand on your own feet. Right. And so that's an important message. Just that of itself that this book is really good at does so well. Awesome characters, awesome art, um, really great team. Uh, and, and I, I you know, I'd like, a, and I know like Richard, Richard Fairgrave, he's, uh, he's another great uh, artist, writer, storyteller. You guys have done uh, work with him. And and so, yeah, just the the books y'all are putting out, uh, books and, and content, articles, interviews. Uh, very impressive, Barbara, for real. And and just, I just, I just appreciate, I appreciate uh, your, your, your voice and attitude in, in, in the industry. It's nice to, it's nice to stumble across on, on days when you need it. I figure this part might take a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw the mic to you. Okay. And do what I'm terrible at and shut up. Uh, but like, <laughs> I I know you got a lot going on and I know you're in, uh, you got like a lot of organizations and stuff. Um, like real quick, like obviously the Kickstarter and, and there I'll, I'll make sure that there's links and stuff in the description. Like we'll make, get into that Kickstarter easy, but like, uh, you personally, uh, fan base, mailing lists, any of these organizations, like any place, like people can sign up to help out libraries, like, the the floor is yours plug promote whatever you can oh thank you so much well first and foremost thank you for having me because i feel like this in and of itself being able to talk to you through your show and the subscribers that you have uh, amassed um is really incredible so thank you for the opportunity and the platform to to share this story we always happy it. to for real this is awesome um, so Fanbase Press is on all of the social medias. Um, just search for Fanbase Press. And uh, I myself am on a lot of them as well. Um, I'm Barbara J. Dillon on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I'm on Facebook. You're welcome to, to reach out and find me, Blue Sky. Um, but um, yeah, I would say the biggest thing right now is just the Kickstarter. If you can check it out, um, please do. There are lots of different uh, tiers available, including the ones that we talked about. Um, a lot of our other catalog for some of our other Eisner nominated titles, um, as you mentioned, Richard Fairgrave's GLAAD award winning title, Four Color Heroes. Um, you can get these digitally or in print, whichever is you know your mode of reading comics um but yeah that's that's the biggest thing right now we a huge thank you to the entire creative team for ripple effects they're absolutely amazing and we're so excited to bring this hardcover to you um and other than that yeah please check out the fanbase press website if you're a creator do not hesitate to reach out uh i know that it's hard to get media in these days because there are so few media outlets so you've made your first personal connection hello don't hesitate to reach out to me through whatever means it is, social media, email, my info's on the website. So please reach out. Um, but yeah, I just appreciate the opportunity and I hope folks will back this Kickstarter campaign. I know they will. It's too good a book not to. Uh, and it's it's got, um, it well, it had a great, I mean, I know the new cover is going to be all, it's, uh, it's fancy and wrap around, but like, yeah, the colors and everything, the, the, the pre, it's just a good looking book. You're just doing everything right, which is aggravating. Oh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, it's so cool. Uh, for real, um, inspiring like what you do uh i i hope i hope like the silly shit i'm into at like metal ninja and geek network and i, I hope i hope we can 
get there and crank out over doing a decade it. You're of already content. doing it. You are already doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, I, I just, uh, I'm glad, I'm glad comics has y'all. I really am. Like you're, you're really good people. Uh, and then I don't know, like a lot of insecurities, uh, you brought to the surface, right? Uh, but in a healthy, cool way, right? That I was able to like connect with this book, uh, leave thinking differently. Um, and and yeah, like a you know, like a glimmer of hope and to see a fucking darkness that is my light. No, I'm just a joke. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but but it was it was cool. Uh so yeah, I hope I, I I really hope a lot of people check out this Kickstarter or stumble across it uh and have a have a cool uh, experience, um, like I did. And I, and, and again, I, I encourage everybody like follow Barbara, follow fan base press, follow me. I get you probably already are following me. Uh, <laughs> so, but you know, if you're not, if you're not, why no, I, do it though, please. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, fan base press, cool people. Great. Not just cool people, great people. Um, I love what you're doing with libraries, love what you're doing with comics and I'm going to, you've listened to my show. I will keep rambling. So I got to get, Goodbye, Barbara. <laughs> <laughs>